Hello there guys and gals, the Welsh Hunter here back with, as always, another 100% achievement and trophy guide. And this time we are starting a series and grabbing everything we can in the first game of four, the awesome Deponia series. Deponia 1, obviously. Now this was developed and published by Didelec Entertainment and it's usually available for just £10.74 but a lot of the time it usually goes on sale for extremely cheap and a lot of the time you can get it bundled with the other three Deponia games for as little as three to four pounds slash dollary dues. So always keep an eye out for the sale, that's how, why I got all these games. Now this is the ultimate in classic point and click adventure and it is a hilarious game to boot. We play as Rufus, a guy whose time on this junk place is over and wants to get to another planet called Elysium. Because being on a cool planet sounds a lot better than the junk we are at, eh? Eh? Yeah, exactly. So achievements wise, they are very easy but there are a few missable ones. So just keep your eye out and do what I do. I will save in a few random spots and that is basically all for the achievements and the fact that we may miss them. Overall, it is a fun game which we can get done in around 2-3 to three hours, maybe an hour more. And so with that being said then, let's begin. Now, I'm not sure if it is the same on PlayStation, but as we begin, you will see this screen. It'll say restart instead of like new game. Uh, now what we should do first is really go into the settings, because you'll see this will happen. Like I said, I'm not sure if it happens on the PlayStation, but it definitely happens on the Xbox. This is the tutorial screen. We need to do the tutorial um, in order to get an achievement, so don't go ahead and skip it. It's basically going to tell you exactly what to do. Uh, we need to speak to people using the A button. And But what, like I said, what this does first is come up with this bloody droggle drug mode. And it is the most annoying thing I think I've ever seen in gaming. If there's anything worse, please let me know. But this is ridiculous. Um, so basically we can look at things as you can see there, we can look at things with the X button, we'll only be doing this a couple of times through the game, we'll mainly be pressing the A and the Y button, but we will be getting out of this bloody droggle drug mode in just a minute. So there is an achievement for completing the game with droggle drug mode on, but we can basically get to the end of the game, make a manual save, and then just, um, go back into droggle drug mode there. So to open the inventory, you press the down on the D-pad button, and then what you can do is actually press the Y button. If you press A to select an item, press the Y button on one, and then go to another thing that you can actually combine it with. So you press Y on the black droggle drug, droggle drug, press Y on the black one, and then interact with it, uh, combine it with the white one, and this little animation will happen, our friend Rufus there will chuck it together, then you can press the A button to make sure that that item is selected. So, pop it in again using the Y button. So if you've got an item that you've either combined or you've just got one in hand, it's usually the Y button that you need to press to put into things. So, you know, again, easy enough to get used to and everything. Press the little switch again using the A button, and that is good to go. So that is the tutorial done. You should be able to skip this uh, part by pressing the B button and then holding the start button. Droggle jug, droggle jug. Ah, oh, man, what is... If the, if we had to literally play this the entire game, I think I, I, would, I would have literally lost 10 brain cells. I'm pretty close to losing all my brain cells. I've got 12 up there at the minute, so if I'd have lost 10, well, let's just say the next couple of guides would have been a lot more dribbly. So, what we are going to be doing, the achievement for completing the tutorial may um, appear in just a bit, but what we're going to do then, we're going to go straight into the settings, we're going to scroll across with the right bumper, now this weird looking character thing with a comb in his hair or something, there is the kindergarten achievement by the way, um, basically we need to, this is what druggle drug mode is, some weird guy with no nose and a comb in his hair, basically as if he was on shrooms or something. But what you need to do is just scroll across on both of them until you get the US slash UK flag without the weird looking character. This will put it back into normal mode and you don't have to listen to Draggle Jug, Draggle Jug. <laughs> and you don't have to lose any brain cells doing it. So now we are back then, everything's less Draggle Juggy and more Englishy, which is good. And what we need to do then, press the A button then to interact with the suitcase. And these are the four items that we need to find. Green socks, a bolt cutter, toothbrush, and I don't know, is that some kind of nuts or something? <clears throat> nuts in your mouth. So we're going to interact with the cushion first. Press the A button on the cushion, and this is where we're going to find the green sock. 
I don't know why there is a cheesy green sock hiding under your pillow. I think we all know why. Head over to the right then. Uh, press A to pick up the torch and then press A again to pick up the oil can. What you can do as well is press the left bumper and the right bumper to sort of scroll across rather than try and move your character everywhere. Uh, that just makes it a hell of a lot easier. Uh, but we're going to interact. We're going to go into Tony's room. And this, <laughs> well, basically, we're going to almost get our nips chopped off there, which would have pinched just a bit. Interact with the note, pressing the A button, of course. Uh, yes, so Tony is our beloved ex-girlfriend who hates us. Um, over to the left here, we're just going to... There is a note, actually, just inside of the bathroom door. Or just on the bathroom door, it's called Challenge Chit or something. So again, press the A button on there to pick up the Challenge Chit note. And then we can go inside the bathroom door eventually. Like I said, sometimes when things... We're going to pick up the plunger right here. But when things are too close together, sometimes it can be a little bit um, finicky. Uh, make sure to pick up the toothbrush here as well on the left-hand side, and that's going to go for a little spin. This is actually the start of our first missable achievement, so make sure to be grabbing that toothbrush. Open up the locker door on the left, and again, try not to shut it. <laughs> actually grab the bolt cutters is what we need, and the detergent at the top as well. Again, interacting with the A button. So we'll come back to that toothbrush a little bit later on. Maybe that's what it is. You've got such acid breath that uh, your toothbrush is just mental. So we're trying to open up the closet door right there. Not a chance. So we actually need a little something. Which, what we're going to do then is press down on the D-pad, of course. Get open the plunger. Press A to interact with it. And then you can just press B button to close. Press the Y button now. And then that will interact the plunger with the closet. Easy, right? Happy days. So press again the A button. Interact with the mouse hole, and again, shove all these items in your tiny little amazing pocket, somehow. Now we're going over to the, uh, we're going to grab this malicious memo again. Tony kind of wishes we were um, halfway in between the Pacific Sea, but that's not happening. Sorry, Lev. Sounds Lev. Uh, we're going to pick up the uh, fork. Oh, well, we're going to interact with the sink first, sorry. So we are going to interact with the sink, get the bucket of green water or whatever the hell that was. And then again, press the right bumper to go, you know, back and forth and then pick up the fork. It's just a lot easier than moving Rufus around. Uh, next, we are going to use the uh, can of used oil. So we're going to make sure to get that up and then interact that with the sink. Again, pressing the Y button. Delicious. And then we're going to get the bitchin post-it. So these post-it notes are starting to get worse. She, she really, really hates us, which... You know, Rufus looks kind of lazy, but that's fine. So, uh, opening up the fridge door, we can see the yellow sock. Um, that's pretty stiff as well. Hmm, I wonder why. Head over to the left there. We're seeing that we can pick up the coat. There we go. So, we're going to grab that item, which, which was off the coat. Another sock. <laughs> so, that should be three socks that you should have now. After picking up the sock from the coat. And then, we're going to get the nagging note. The next one might as well be called Death Note. Yeah? Death Note for all you anime fans out there. <laughs> anyway, interact with the uh, hot plate. And what we're going to use now is the empty can. And we're going to use it with the crumbs in the sofa. Hung. So put the crumbs in the sofa. Again, that would have been the Y button that you would have had to, to have used. And that comes up with provisions. So using the empty jar, pressing the Y button on the settee or the chair, that would have got us some provisions. And now you can interact that with the mouse trap. Sorry, everything's going a mile a minute. So we interact the provisions with the mouse trap. And then what we can do is head up into this sort of dark corner. Press the Y button when you have the mouse trap. Uh, with the mouse trap with the provision, the trap with the bait, make sure that is selected first, as you can see, and then press the Y button, pop that down, and then our acid-infused, gummy, disgusting toothbrush will appear. And that is actually going to get us our first achievement, so there it is then. Brush Hunter, caught your toothbrush, and I bet you didn't think you'd be seeing that <laughs> in many a game. So, with this hot plate then, make sure that the hot plate and not the oven is... Uh, selected, we're going to interact with the bunch of notes, and <laughs> we are going to be interacting with the oven eventually. Not the hot plate, because of course you need the oven on first to get the hot plate hot. Makes sense, right? 
So again, pressing the Y button when you've got the bunch of notes, put that in the oven, and then use the hand torch. So again, down to the D-pad, get your torch up, and then press the Y button once again. So you should be getting the point of that by now. Every time we need to use an item on something, it's the Y button. There we go. So, all good. That's all nice and boiling. Now we need to use the pot of water with the hot plate, obviously. Don't touch it, because you'll burn your pubes. And nobody likes a burnt pubic hair in their hot plate, or their pot of soup. But we are going to actually be washing the socks. <laughs> so, we're going to use the detergent. Don't touch the damn hot plate, of course. Uh, but we use the detergent with the um, pot, rather than the hot plate, of course. Because then that'll just burn. Know what I mean? Yes. <laughs> well, you know what I mean. So we're going to use the sock. I don't think it, it doesn't matter which sock it is. It can be the crustiest sock you've got. Probably better to wash, to be honest. So use the blue sock. And then, again, in fact, we're actually going to be uh, washing all three. So no matter how crusty or how clean they are, we're going to be using all three. So make sure to put all three socks. Only teenage boys will get that joke, by the way. And probably uh, parents who've gone in and found said crusty socks. Yeah. Anyway, fork. We're going to use the fork with the pot. And somehow that's going to work. A bloody treat. Even though you wouldn't have burnt your hand. I'm sure you would have burnt your hand. But that's that's also fine. But we're going to leave that for now. And we're going to head back up. And we're going to head back upstairs into Rufus's room. There we go. And now that we've got all four items, we can actually just pack them. Uh, so you need to actually, obviously, again, press down on the D-pad and put all four things that we need. So, of course, there was provisions. So, again, you uh, press the A button on the inventory menu, press the Y button to interact with it. Then the bolt cutters. That was to next to one. And then, of course, the next one was your, uh, there was a pair of socks. So, obviously, you would have just got them from cleaning the pot. Lovely. And the last one was the dirtiest, mankiest a livest toothbrush in the world. So now that it seems like we packed everything. Now we can go, except we can't. Uh, so we actually need to leave one thing. And what we're going to leave is the bolt cutters. You can take the dildo out of there. <laughs> uh, but we actually need to use the bolt cutters. Um, we are going to need to use everything else, I believe. So the bolt cutters we are not going to leave need. So here we go then. We're basically... Attempting to say goodbye as we try to go to Elysium. So again, smash through all the dialogue there, pressing the A button. And you should be good. We, I mean, it's definitely worth checking out the dialogue. It's a very funny game. Again, just for the sake of video, we're going to smash through it. So we're going to open the door. And we're going to uh, interact with this storage space. We're going to take the battery out. And then what we're going to do is put our suitcase in the storage space. Because that always works, right? <laughs> Everything works without a battery. <laughs> there we go. And the last thing we're going to do is go ahead, grab the wrench, which is just on the opposite side of this weird cardboard box bridge, and then we're just going to head up past our friend, little uh, little midget man Wenzel, right there. <laughs> and we're coming back into our beloved ex-partner's house, the one who hates us. For all eternity. So we're going back down to where the pot and everything is now. And we are heading out to the left. And we're going in front of Tony's house. Uh, also what you can do is actually press the left trigger to sprint a little bit as well. Uh, so just in case you thought this game was getting a bit quicker. Interact with the mailbox right here again. Uh, using the wrench to uh, take the mailbox off. That will we will keep nice and snug in our massive pocket. You can touch the chili pepper if you want. What that does is just burn your hand and basically makes you blind very temporarily. I, I assume, if you touch your eyes anyway. So we've got the mailbox. We're heading back up right now. And we're going back uh, out to um, Tony's backyard. <laughs> we're going to Tony's back passage for a minute. Um, which is actually really weird to say. My sister's called Tony and I really just cringed out at myself there. So... Anyway, so, damn, let's just move on, yeah? <laughs> so, we're going to interact now with the seat. Uh, use the um, wrench with the seat. Of course, also what you can do as well is um, if you press the left and right on the D-pad, you can scroll through at the bottom there, as you can see. You can go through your inventory a lot quicker. So, you actually put the mailbox into the 
uh, this little contraption thing right here and then we can interact with the battery and put that back in its place so make sure again like I said that you've put the mailbox in and the battery's going in as well so you seem to have gotten a little confused for some reason but that is where the batteries get the batteries going inside the mailbox yeah you got it you got it girl so it might be worth making a quick manual save here, because on the right we've got this control panel next to the harpoon. Now we need to complete this mini game without skipping it. So you see the lever on the bottom left there with a bunch of circles around it? That is what we're going to be using. Now, I'm also going to be telling you what to do, so interact with the leftmost circle first, and then the um, one at the top, and then one on the left again. And again you're going up, and then it will be left again. And then it will be bottom right. And then it's going to be up. And then to the left. Then to the up. And then that is that. So it is, you know, it's, it's very easy enough. Hopefully you sort of got it as I got it there. I hope you know what I meant. Up, left, right, down. You know what I meant. You know what I meant, right? And then our beloved hatred ex, Tony, who's quite hot. Uh, she appears and wants us out and dead. Rufus, it's almost time. Sorry, once the fuse is lit, I'll be gone for good. Now, as for the dialogue options, for this one you can just choose I'm leaving for good, but there'll be a few dialogue options later on that we're going to need to choose specific ones. So I'll obviously let you know when we get there. Um, otherwise, we can just get the hand torch out, interact that with the fuse, of course, pressing the Y button, and let's do this thing, baby. Oh, let's not do this thing. So, we find ourselves in a bit of a sticky situation, but just interact with the chain a couple of times, and Rufus is going to do like this incredible thing where he, where he chains himself and then somehow unwraps himself to get up to shoot. As hardcore as absolute balls, this guy. So, fantastically, our suitcase also arrived at the very fantastic point as well. So we need to pick up the provisions. And we need to pick up the crusty, but now clean, socks. Now there are a couple of hatches. So we're going to go with the middle one. And what you need to do is get your provisions out. So again, either you can either go left or right on the D-pad. The provisions are obviously the one with the jar. Interact that, and this maintenance arm will appear. Now, while it's out, get your pair of dirty, crusty old socks out, and then ch put that on the hatch. So put the socks on the hatch. What that'll do is the uh, it'll close it, but not fully, so now we can actually use the maintenance arm. We can actually grab the maintenance arm now. Um, if the arm does go back up inside, don't worry, it'll come back out eventually anyway. And then we can use that arm on the hatch, and then this little cutscene will appear. This lovely looking woman called Goal is getting all threatened by all these Star Wars dudes. I've just offended so many Star Wars fans right now. <laughs> but you won't be telling him anything. You would. And then, I'm an illicit out Just. So Rufus, thinking with his bottom head and not his top head, thinks he's going to be the hero, so we can interact with the hatch, interact with the middle lever. And that is the lever that we need to press. So again, press the left bumper or right bumper to go over. Middle lever, press it, and silly things are going to happen. Rufus, stop thinking with your dong, buddy. Trust me, it doesn't work out well. Oops, guess that was the wrong lever. You dead men! <laughs> you need to catch me first, but I... First time he here? Uh... Uh-uh. Ouch! I was so close. But no, the minute I see a beautiful damsel in distress, wham! So, welcome to the beautiful town of Deponia. So we're gonna head to Le Village Center. And as you can see, there's a couple of places that we can go. We've got Tony's shop on the right, who hates us, remember? Tony's house, who also hates us. Um, but of course, what we can do, remember, you can use the left trigger to sprint. For some reason, I haven't figured that one out yet. So we are going to be heading all the way to the right-hand side, up 
to the town hall. Uh, for some reason, I got confused about absolutely nothing there, which sounds about right actually for me. And just head inside. Now, you're going to start talking to this lovely, beautiful, bearded, chin, lovely breasted lady man right there. And we can now uh, speak to these three uh, guys and gals waiting, but you don't have to actually say anything. We can just say, I'll skedaddle. You don't actually have to compliment their hats because they do look ridiculous, which is all good. So first things first, just on the left hand side, try not to go too far so you don't go out, but there are some magnets that we're going to pick up. And then what you need to do just behind the woman on the left is the lever we're going to press. Push that down once and then to the left of you is going to be a waiting number. They really missed a beat by um, using the number 69, but that's okay. That's just my childish humour, as you're all accustomed to by now, right? Yeah, I'm pretty sure. Anyway, head all the way to the back into this uh, waiting area here. And there is goal. There is our goal. She is the goal that we want to get to Elysium. So we're going to head through, the, as you can see there, just on the right-hand side, this uh, weird doctor thing who barely looks like he brushes his teeth. And we're going to have a little bit of a cutscene again. You can skip that. Press the B button and then the start button. Smash through L dialogue. So with Dr. Weirdo Gizmo out the way there, we can now head back into the assembly hall on the right. But don't go too far. We're going to look at this doorknob, which we're going to use to open. There's a cardboard box inside, but mainly, more important than that, is the balloons. So you can have a look at the cardboard box by pressing the X button if you want. Uh, big Roof is going to say some dialogue. Makes no difference, but we are actually going to take the balloons. So, of course, press the E button to take the balloons. They are nice. We're not going to get high with them like everyone seems to do in places like Kavos and everything. We're just going to go back to the town hall for a moment. There we go. So, we need some coffee. So, we're going to head out all the way back to the left, back to the village centre. And now what we're going to do is go into the alley which is directly in the middle right here now there are a lot of things to do but the first thing that we are going to do is go inside of the bar which you need to go up this little ramp into Lonzo's bar now that sounds pretty badass and he looks badass oh my god But the first thing we're going to do, on the left, we're going to grab a dart. So make sure to pick up the dart. And then just by the right of Lonzo is a cow sign. Good looking cow. Pick up the sign there. And then we can talk to Lonzo. So we need a, a specific dialogue option. And that one is... Um, did you hear about the stranger, the girl? The first one. And then is there something on your menu that can give someone a real boost? And no, we're not talking about the old uh, kia, 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 kia. We're talking about an espresso, something, something much more deadly. This is it. This is the moment I've been waiting for. Hey, I think this bar, this I and you in. Okay. What? Well, I the people. Uh. I be on for, but I take the if you in the me. Oh. All these little coffee machines these days, and all you need is something as big and powerful as like a big um, piano church organ type thing. Anyway, when we uh, interact with Rufus, we're gonna interact with the red curtain. So make sure to pick that one up as well. And then we should now be good to go. So we need to find a whole bunch of different ingredients. This part's going to take at least 25 to 30 minutes-ish. Huh? What was that? Oh, that must... So we will come and talk to everyone's favourite character, Hanek, in a minute. But we're going to go to the emergency station on the right first. A couple of things to pick up in here. Now this is Dr. Weird Gizmo's room. Um, but first, what we're going to do is go all the way to the right to pick up the dissecting scalpel. Put that where the sun don't shine. Also, the dent is drilled. You can stick that where the sun don't shine either. And then have a look at this laughing gas uh, station. Now, again, press down to go into your uh, inventory on the D-pad. Pick A to pick the balloons. And then press the Y button with the balloons with the laughing gas. And that's going to give us a 
Well, a balloon filled with laughing gas, obviously. I didn't know what else, uh, <laughs> didn't know what else you expected there. Press the lever. We're going to press it down once. And then what you're going to need to do is go again to the right and get out the foot fetters from in between the uh, hole there, or the gap. Now, we're going to need to be a bit careful with this lever. What you need to do, you can actually push it down again or up. So as you can see, there's two directions. So make sure we push the lever down once more. Uh, because obviously Gizmo's a fireman, ambulance man, and a policeman. So it depends what he wants. Depending on the situation. So go and get the asbestos gloves. I wonder what we're going to be doing with those. <laughs> and then we can now grab the uh, fire extinguisher. Pop that one out as well. Too heavy to lug around, so we're just going to leave it there. Next, what we're going to do is actually put the foot fetters back in. So again, you need to pick it up and then place it back into the gap. Eventually. Come on. Okay, <laughs> right, so we eventually make it then. So yeah, put the foot fetters back in there and then we're going to push the lever back up. And then these swinging handcuffs will come up from above, knock us on the head. And what the hell is Dr. Gizmo doing with those? Why are they all pink and furry? Hmm, where's the real police? Actually, probably out doing pink and furry stuff. So we're going to push the lever back down once more, as we can see. And then make sure the handcuffs are in your inventory right now, because we're going to interact that with the hatch. We're going to put that with the pole. And then we are going to leave by going out of the left-hand side for now. So what we're going to do then, we're basically going all the way around, and you've seen the fireman's pole that um, you could slide down. Well, we're actually going to slide up it, if it's so possible. So obviously we're going to head out of the alley, all the way to the left, to the uh, front of the town gate. So that is where you're going. Now on the PlayStation version, I think now even, you can use, uh, there's arrows that you can use to get, uh, as we go to the emergency station, they're just on the left-hand side. But on the PlayStation, there's arrows that you can use to go to places quicker. Um, for some reason on the Xbox, that doesn't work. So it's a pain in the ass, but there we go. So we're going to grab the lock pick now from the side of the bed, and obviously we're going to use that to get out of the cell grating. So we've basically just got another another escape us for uh, escape us escape e for us. We're going to pull the lever up once to get the hospital bed back up, and then we're going to head to the gap in the wall where the fire extinguisher and the foot fetter was, and we are actually going to open up this time the doctor's cabinet. We're going to get a little stimulant. And a little syringe. Now, now we wonder what the hell's going on. Because this just kind of uh, looks like steroid use. Maybe Rufus wants to get on the roids and look fantastic for Gore when she wakes up. When we stick an espresso down her throat. Because, by the way, espressos and coffee cures all types of um, unconsciousness and getting your head knocked out, by the way. So, don't treat it with a doctor. Just get some coffee down and you'll be awake in no time. So, when we get the syringe and the stimulant, we're going back towards the village centre. And we have to talk to the most annoying woman who hates us entirely in the game. So sort of head down and we're going to go, when we get to this sort of middle part, start heading down and then Rufus will automatically come up towards Tony's shop right here. So, well, son, it's just got to be done. The woman who hates us the most, but she looks, well, I don't know, she, she looks pretty but very angry, which is always a nice look on some women. Some. Some just look like they want to straight up murder us, which is scary. Uh, what we can do, though, is just say, I've got to go here. We don't have to talk to Tony if you don't want. Um, basically, to any woman that hates you and wants to straight up kill you, it's just best to avoid it. Don't don't talk to it. Interact with the vouchers there on the left-hand side, and Tony's going to be like, Hey, you go and fudge yourself, man. This ain't happening. And I get why. I mean, really, all this, I have to breathe in. And then after she's done being a nut job, head to the right, have a look at the hooks, press A to interact with the hooks, and somehow uh, Rufus won't just pick up one, he'll stick his whole hand in, which is hilarious. Now, doesn't that lever look like a, a dildo on the wall? I just, I've only just noticed that, and I find that hilarious. 
Obviously, Rufus wasn't doing the job for Tony. That's probably why she left us. Huh? <laughs> anyway, we can get outside of Tony's shops once we've got the hooks now. And we can just head back down again. Rufus will do this automatically. And we can now get the key of the first aid kit. Tony just gives that to us, by the way. So we head to the left. Not directly to the left. But to the right to where the emergency phone is there, we can now go back into Tony's house. So that's how you get the first aid key kit, by the way. Tony gives it to us very reluctantly. As she would for someone who doesn't give her the goods. Um, you can interact with the... Uh, get your asbestos gloves up now. And um, interact with the chili pepper if you want. That is what we're going to do right now. And that's the only reason that we get these asbestos gloves. Somehow I still press the wrong button. And give ourselves some uh, stingy wingies on the old fingertips there. So grab the chili pepper with the asbestos hands and then go into Tony's house once more. I love that we've got free reign from somebody's house who despises us ever so. I think it's great. And then just at the bottom of Rufus's bedroom, you can then find the first aid kit. So obviously we need to get that out of our inventory. Press Y and then we can get the tranquilizer out of it before heading out the back of Tony's back passage. <laughs> and then once we're at the back of Tony's house, we're going to head down. Uh, a couple of things we're going to pick up. On the left, we're going to pick up the funnel first. So make sure to pick up the funnel. You can't spell Nell without the fun. Nah, that's pretty crap. Pick up the torch. <laughs> That one's a bit easier to lug around, and then pick up the dud, and then what we're going to do is uh, press down on the D-pad to go into your inventory, and we are going to combine the dud with the dissector scalpel. So obviously press Y on the dud, and then press Y again when you get to the dissector scalpel. And then what that'll do is give us a fine black powder, which... Well, I suppose this, back in the day, I suppose this was the way to make... Some strong ass espresso coffee. So there it is, we got the black powder, and now we can basically go back towards Tony's shop. I know it's tempting, but try to not steal any of Tony's items and then try to sell them at Tony's shop because that would be the ultimate in stupidity. We can't really sell any items in here since Tony's shop is the only shop that we can shop at on Deponia, which is a shame. Um, and when I said Tony's shop, we're actually heading all the way to the left. We're going into Wenzel's house now, so sorry about that. Tony's shop, Wenzel's house, it's the same thing. Right? Hey, Rufus. Back all that Yeah, yeah. This time I'm all it indeed. Yeah, well, day round. That by the what? Isn't that my? Well, you said, but and you you just yes. Well. So for this dialogue option, then you can literally just say "see you later." We don't have to mess around. We'll just say "see you later," you little dwarf. Um, nice hair as well. I'm gonna shave that, and then we're going into the bathroom upstairs. Luckily, again, we got free reign. Of all these people's houses, which is great, uh, but we're going to interact with the sponge, pick that one up then, again, obviously using the A button, and then what we're going to do is go into our inventory, and we are going to combine the balloon filled with laughing gas, again, press Y on that, and then press Y on the hook as well to uh, combine them both together, so now we've got a, well, balloon with hook. Again, don't know what else you expected, but interact that balloon with hook with the fireplace, and that is going to go up past Wenzel's chimney. Which is very funny, right? Yeah, I'm pretty sure of it. Anyway, where are we going into the basement next, which is on the left-hand side. Sorry, I've done that part a little bit quickly. It's just on the left as you come down. We are now going to uh, whack open our inventory and get the dentist's drill out. And then use that drill on the pipe, obviously using the Y button again. I'm pretty sure you know how the game's working by now. And um, we've got a couple of holes in there to stick our thing into. Not our thing, I mean, we've got items to stick into it later. Yeah, <laughs> you know what I meant. You. You and your dirty minds. Anyway, we can head back out for now. We'll come to Wenzel's place in just a little bit to see how our DIY is uh, getting on a little bit. But for now, we're going to head all the way back up to the right. And we're going to head all the way 
where the town, the front of the town gate is, but we're actually going to the left with the big cooling tower on top of Wenzel's houses. So don't go into the front of the town gate. Head to the left and you'll automatically come here. Press A to interact with the pipe once. We're going to kick it all the way around. <laughs> all the way around. And then we are going to press A on the tap of the reservoir. And that is going to get all this delicious, gunky, like literal poop that is coming down. That is literal poop. And Wenzel thinks that he's basically struck water when all he's struck is literal poop. Which is just unfortunate. I bet the Americans won't be trying to evade you for that. It's not blacky oil and it's not clear water. It is mucky poop. The Americans will leave you alone, luckily. Just joking, Americans. You know I love you. Anyway, we're going back into Wenzel's house now, all the way down. It's, it was just a joke, honestly. Please don't invade me, American army. And then Wenzel thinks he has, like I said, struck water. And, well, there is a little bit, I suppose, but not enough to, uh, you know, be rich and stuff. So when Wenzel leaves, our little dwarfy pal, make sure to grab the divining rod right there. This is the only way we can get this. So make sure to grab that divining rod. That's going to come in handy quite a bit later on. And then we should be good to leave. And only now have I just gone, oh my gosh, I can press the left trigger to start sprinting places. So now we can start getting to places a little bit quicker. Wow, and it's only taken me only 36 minutes of gameplay. Oh, god damn. My guides are... Just fantastic, right? Anyway, now uh, we're not actually heading into Lonzo's bar. I got a bit ahead of myself there, but we're going to look at the detonation plan. Press the X button there on the detonation plan, and now we can finally talk to Hinnick. Hinnick, the very English Hinnick. Um, how exactly does that detonation plan of yours work? So choose that option, and then what we can do... Now, again, what... Uh, basically, this achievement can be... We can just say now, talk to you later, by the way. But what we're going to do is make a manual save. Because for some people, this achievement worked first time. For other people, it did not. So it is definitely worth here making a manual save. And I urge I urge you to make a manual save... Um, you know, quite frequently, quite, reg quite regularly, just in case things go wrong. Or you don't have... Or you've missed an item or something somewhere. So... Yeah, make a manual save. I would make uh, me. I'm an overly paranoid, overly cautiousistic person. That's a new word. I'll just make up. I'm going to take that. Uh, I always do a double manual save just in case. You literally never know, do you? So what we're going to do now then with the blast signal again. This is another mini game that you cannot skip. So we are going to get the magnet that we found earlier. At the uh, should be at the top left of our inventory. Eventually, somehow I'm going through everything else except for the magnets. There we go. So obviously press A to get them up and then use them on the detonation plan by pressing the Y button. And now what we've got to do is, you see we've got these three magnets and we need to put them in the specific, very specific location. They should be the same one all the time. So the one, sort of follow the one I do. So you've got this sort of smaller arrow pointing down, put it at the top left. With the smaller arrow pointing left, put it um, at the bottom very right. And then the last one you should put on the top right there. So apologies if that was a little bit quick there. But what you need to do is put those three in the particular order. And then press A on the blast signal. And then that is what should get us the achievement. Um, so yeah, apologies if it was a bit quick. But just go back and pause the video there if, um, if I was just a little bit quick for you. Very sorry if I was. But we've done it with the first try. You have to do it on the first try. You can't mess that one up. And then we can go back to the village center. Again, if the achievement hasn't unlocked by now, just reload the save and then try it again. That should be fine. But we can go back into the town hall anyway. So I think it's our lucky day. We've got a waiting number there on the floor. 63. It's uh, it's going to have to do for now. Wenzel's going to come out. And we're going to have a little argumentatus. Now, and put what I you saw. Well, I next up, Rufus. Well, I then for some reason I tried to give Wenzel the number 63 ticket, but we need to give it to Lottie, the glorious um, shadow man with the really very beautiful breasts there. 
with the manliest, womanliest voice you'll ever know in your life. So give him her the uh, 63. Oh my god, I'm getting confused now. The 63 ticket, and then we can go into the mayor's office. So, wonder we can do a little bit of digging around. The mayor will pop his head up eventually. Oh, there he is. What what a place to sleep if you're mayor. That would be my place to sleep. With a bottle of gin. <laughs> so what we're going to do first is say I came here for the Elysian girl. And we're going to choose the top option there. And then the second dialogue option we're going to choose is But I saved her life. I need some espresso, bro. Did you know she's unconscious? And then just say I'm starting to run out of good arguments here. And that's all. That's all, folks. There, he's a miserable git. He obviously hasn't had enough sleep in gin. Well, that happens to the best of us, to be fair. So now we're going to get out the divining rod. So make sure your divining rod is equipped. And then use it on the water emblem there. Obviously, with the rod equipped, press Y in the water emblem. That is going to turn that to the side slightly. And then another drawer is going to open without the mayor, but it is going to be a key to the cupboard. So, well, you know, it is technically theft, but, you know, we, we've shoved everything into our pockets so far. So a key to the cupboard, well, just adds to it extra, doesn't it? So we need to interact with the globe now. I need to press the Y button on the globe. It's going to spin, spin, Spinny, spinny, spin. In fact, it's not going to spin, but it's going to open up a secret compartment so we can get rid of the glass. So we're going to interact with the glass just to get rid of that. And then, obviously, what you need to do is put the glass in the keyhole, because that always works, right? <laughs> nope. We need to put the key in the keyhole, open it up. This might be unnecessary. Get to his legacy. His liquor cabinet. Now that is the kind of mayor's office you want. Hidden booze. So we're going to uh, interact with the drawer there just to get rid of that. And then we're going to interact with the booze. But, for whatever reason, the booze disappears from my inventory. And it probably will for yours as well, especially if you're playing on Xbox. So if that's the case, just do not panic. Uh, but we can get out of there now. Um, so yeah, if, if the booze goes from the inventory, don't panic. I did, and turns out it was fine anyway, so we're all good now. But we're going to head back up to Tone Wise house now. And there's actually only one thing that we're going to do. We're going to go and spit in all of Tony's favourite mugs, because we are that petty. No, <laughs> joking. Don't be that kind of bitter ex. But we are actually going to go to the boiling pot, which should still be boiling, and we're going to stick our sponge in there. So obviously, uh, get your sponge... Equipped from the inventory, press Y to equip it with the pot there. And then basically what it's going to do is give us a wet sponge. Could have put that under the tap sink, although then again it's full of murky brown poop water. So yeah, probably best not to do that in, in all fairness. And um, then we're going to head back out. Again, of course, remember to use the left trigger if you want to run just that extra bit faster. Uh, but we're going to head all the way up to the top left to the town gate. Or the front of the town gate. Very surprised that no one's actually questioned why we're uh, so shifty and carrying loads of things by now. But head to the car, on the windshield, and use the wet sponge with the windshield. Again, surely you could have found something else. There's literally a cloth on the bowl right there or something you could have used, but that's fine as well. Must be real dirty. Um, but we are now going to see that um, the driver of the car is called Sugarpuff. Sorry, Sugarpuff. I did just read that as well. So, Sugarpuff, we know, know the name owner of the car, so we're going to go back into the alley right now, and we're going to speak to Chinik again. Chinik. He is literally um, just everyone's favourite person, just because of the epic laziness that he possesses. Um, so we're going to see, uh, what exactly are you guys doing down there? For the first dialogue option. Sitting down, drinking coffee. Awesome. Maybe you have my key too. And then we've got to choose, remember to choose Sugar Puff. Honey Sugar Puff Monster. Before everyone got offended by sugar, for some reason. And then choose Pink. 
So pink here, and then I love the ballet because everyone loves the ballet, right? It's so not boring. Better than golf, mine, I gotta be honest. So he's given us the key, so thank you, Genek. Thank you for your no chin and not questioning us at all. But we're gonna go back to the car now. So you know to know what to do with the key, right? We need to open up the truck door with it. And then there is a lever, which should be just on your bottom there. Not in your bottom, on your bottom, so interact with the lever. Pop the hood, or the bonnet, if you're British, of course. And then we're going to use the dentist's drill with the battery. Which is always nice. Not the dart, the dart won't do it. We need to be using the dentist's drill. So eventually I figure that one out. And then obviously press the Y button. Now, it is almost too convenient. And the convenience that there is so much acid in there. And it just keeps splurting out for us. It's just fantastic. But we're going to use the glass of clear water. Remember, we got that from the globe from the mayor's office earlier on. So make sure to make sure you would have grabbed that from the mayor's office. Interact with it with the acid. And now we have a glass full of acid. For some reason, Rufus drank, didn't die. Which means we are super hardcore and cute. Now what we're going to do is put the cow sign. Remember we got that from Lonzo's bar earlier as well. Interact that with the bulletin board. And then for some reason this mechanical bull who has no sense of feelings or anything. Starts to get a bull boner. For a sign. Which sounds about right. Now we're going to get the red curtain. Put that over the bulletin board. And that's going to anger him up the blood a bit. And then for the finale. We are going to use our syringe. So get your syringe out, put the syringe with the bull, and we basically need his taurine. His, yeah, so everything that is found in energy drinks, we're going to get the taurine, but we're going to be thrown off. And that's what happens when you have a monster energy can, especially if you call Kyle, like me, you punch holes through walls and stuff. <laughs> that's a myth, by the way. That's not a real thing. Don't listen to the memes. Don't believe everything you read on the internet, honestly. Yes. So, we've got the taurine from the bull. Now, we can head back towards, I believe, Tony's shop right now. So, again, she's going to be very pleased to see us. But we don't care because we've got super cool glasses on her head. Aviation glasses. Uh, but we're not actually here to talk to Misery. We're going to use the grinder on the left-hand side. So, first things first, we need the chili pepper. So, get your chili pepper out. Put that into the grinder. And then the next thing we're going to use is the stimulant. Because, of course, that would also work. I mean, wouldn't it just work if you poured the stimulant down, shoved the chili pepper down Gold's neck, and then the black powder? But it would basically be the same thing, right? Anyway, once you get the chili pepper and stimulant in, get the black powder out. Put that in. That should be all three items done. We can now close the grinder and then interact with the crank. That gives us the espresso coffee death machine drink death machine drink we'll call it that'll do i'll call this blend the major obviously remember to pick up your things before we leave and then we are going to head back to lonzo's bar the hardcore badass man with a heart of gold Alrighty then, so back at Lonzo's Bar, we need to combine the syr syringe with taurine and the glass of clear, energy-rich water. Now, if you've got the booze, uh, make sure to interact with that one as well. But again, if you don't have the booze in your inventory, like I didn't right here, do not worry about it. So just get the syringe with taurine and the glass of uh, energy-rich water. And then what you need to do is interact that with the coffee machine there on the right-hand side. Job done, mate. And then what you need to do, the coffee powder that we grinded up ourselves, we need to put that into the uh, coffee machine as well, which is in the middle. There we go. Job done. And pretty much, well, <laughs> let's do this. Let's make some smoke. Some coffee smoke. D 
death machine drink smoke. More pressure! Oh, oh. Hold on to your balls! <gasps> no. Oh, oh, that reminds me. So, that went excitingly well, and this brew will do the job. Nothing wakes you up from unconscious more than a homemade coffee. So we've picked that up, we are now good to go. You should also get the achievement there for um, getting all the ingredients together. So like I said, that took about 25 minutes or so to get everything together, plus a few little extras. But we're going into the town hall now. We are going to need to try and stick it in Gold's throat. The, 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 the coffee, the, the funnel with the coffee. Anyway, we've got the mayor and Dr. Weirdo just having a little um, argument there with the little dwarf Wenzel in the background, sort of trying to, you know, sounds more like Plankton from SpongeBob SquarePants, where you can't really hear him because he's so small. He's so dirty. Anyway, so what we're going to do there is we are going to try and interact now. What happens on the PlayStation is... And we'll come to this bit a little bit later on. We're going to try and give her the espresso for now. Dr. Gizmo, he's basically saying, this is my patient, go away. I'm staring like a perv. So what we're going to do is get the torch out, go down to the main assembly hall bit, get the hand torch out, and then interact the hand torch there with the cardboard box. Dr. Weirdo is going to go from caring, weird, perv uh, ambulance man to fire patrolman. So... And he doesn't have a chin as well, which is weird. He's just all teeth, which is fantastic. We're going to interact with the doorknob. Just lock him in there. That's nice of you to burn him alive. And then what we're going to do is go ahead and speak. Uh, we're going to grab the stethoscope first. Sorry, so make sure to grab the stethoscope. I don't think that's a time section. Um, but now, of course, um, the... Uh, medical mode, he's going to be an ambulance man, but he's going to be a policeman now because obviously the stethoscope is gone. What we need to do is get the stethoscope out and put it into the mayor's back passage right there. I don't know what goes on with Deponia, but I'm not sure I like it. So you need to put the stethoscope in the mayor's pants. They can have a hell of an argument and that is going to distract them long enough for us to basically almost wake Goal up. You can't arrest me. You're fired. I, I arrested you first. But this is the part I was telling you then. On PlayStation, I'm pretty sure, right now, you can use the funnel with the espresso and wake goal up. For whatever reason on the Xbox, it doesn't happen. This, uh, I'll show you exactly what I mean. Rufus will just keep telling you to focus Rufus. So, for whatever reason, we have to do another bit before we come to this bit, which I did not realise. Um, but I thought, just in case anyone gets confused by that part, then I will show you what we have to do before we can wake Goal up. So, get your buns out of the assembly hall, and we are going back up to Tony's shop. So when we get to Tony's shop, do not head inside, but what you actually need to do is combine the tranquilizer and the dart. Now, I think I did that earlier on, but I forgot to mention it, so apologies about that. But if you um, combine the tranquilizer and the dart, that turns into a prepared dart. Then we can put the prepared dart and combine that with the funnel, obtaining the blowpipe. So, again, apologies I didn't mention it earlier on. Um, don't know why I didn't miss that one, but again. So, tran combine tranquilizer and dart, combine prepared dart with funnel, and then put blowpipe with window. That will knock Tony out. And then, like I said, you can rub your, your naked butt on her head, so she now has um, hair that stinks like butt. Which is very childish, but also very funny as well. If that's the kind of humour you're into, of course. If, you know, if you're a bit more sophisticated than that, you can just nick her vouchers like we're going to do, and then leave. <laughs> oh, uh, by the way, I... Mm, uh, no, no, will, will you keep your hand? I can't. Don't push your luck, Rufus. She's going to start coming round and she's going to decapitate everything that you love. Which is 
probably only one thing that you love, and that's somewhere dangling. So what we can do now is just sprint our way back up to the town hall, and now, like I said, we can use the funnel with the espresso and actually wake Goal up. Again, not sure why we had to do it in this particular order on the Xbox, but, well... Let's not just do what I did there. We are going into the assembly hall. But like I said, for PlayStation users, um, you should be able to wake Goal up, no problem, and then do the whole blowpipe thing with Tony later. Again, not sure why it was in that order, but it is what it is. So chuck your funnel in Goal's mouth. It's not a party, so don't whiz in the funnel either. That's only for <laughs> really funny parties when everyone's completely knocked out with booze. Um... It, 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 is that a thing? Is that a thing people do? <laughs> it's been so long since I've had a party. Just choose heck, this is simply useless, and then a little cutscene shall begin. What did you we need to... What did you... To quit... To a little... You... What my... I... The... But... Can you... What maybe... Of that... You... Did me... You... So, when that little uh, interaction is over with, we're going to head back out. And we're going all the way to the left. We're basically done, I think, with this particular little area. For now, we'll come back and forth. And we're going back into the town hall and we're going into the assembly hall where the, once again, the fantastic mayor of Deponia is just, well, taking a cheeky dirt nap again. Obviously, there's only like eight people on the whole, you know, on the whole planet, so we should be good. So, go back to the right. Make sure to pick up the funnel off the floor there. Pick up the microphone from the stand. We're going to be needing that in a bit, for a bit, and then get the clock from the mayor's chest. Thieving like a boss. Disclaimer, don't thieve in real life. And with this little bit done, we can now head back out and we go into the main waiting area in the town hall. And then what we're going to do is use the mayor's clock with the post office. So where Lottie is, a beautiful, big, massive chin, get your mayor's clock out and then use it with the opening hours. Basically what that's going to do is get the post office open for us, which is what we need to do right now. Uh, but first, we're going to head back to the mayor's office. Only a small, cheeky thing we need to do. Uh, what we're going to do first is interact with the bell. And as you can see, there is nothing in there. We took the key earlier on. So we're going to get out the divining rod once again. And use it with the water emblem to turn it back to get the mayor's weird bed out. Bump, there we go. Obviously, the mayor's not in there. Which is great for us, but we are going to interact with the uh, cushion. So make sure it's on the cushion, and then get the planet magnetic field. So that is exactly what we need before we can head straight out of the mayor's office and straight opposite into the post office. So we are going to be coming up to another mini game, but we're going to go to the left up to the operator's platform and then open up the cupboard that we immediately set our buns behind right there and then use the magnetic field that we just got from the mayor's office on it. So the planet's magnetic field and get prepared for another mini game then. So these are the ones in order that you have to pick. So when we get there first, Okay, so choose the second row right button, and then the second row middle button, and then the second row middle button again, and then the second row left button. Then the second row middle button, and again, and then choose the uh, second row right button, second row middle button, second row middle button, bottom row middle button, and then that should be that. So it should uh, look like an L shape, basically. So once you've done that, we can actually press B to exit. And that should unlock us the achievement there for uh, completing the Pigeon minigame without skipping. So hopefully the directions were not too difficult to follow either. It was quite an easy one. 
But now what we're going to do is open up the hatches here on the right hand side. Only going to see an orange cat and a white cat. Now, what we are supposed to do, there is, a, there is an achievement for this one. So what we're going to do is get the espresso out first and use it with the orange cat on the left. Now, the coffee makes it obviously work faster. And then with the white cat, what we're going to do is actually use the uh, tranquilizer. So get the tranquilizer out, interact with it with the cat, not the hatch, obviously, because it doesn't work with the hatch. So the kitty slows right down, looks like he's on his last legs, poor little ting. And then what we're going to do is use the vouchers with the robot, the post bot. And then what you can do is you can say, uh, see you later, we don't need to say anything to the post bot. We'll just give him the vouchers and he'll start going and obviously the cats are going to start doing their ting. Posted. Error. Postage. Dispatch cancelled. And then that will actually unlock us the achievement missing postage because he has no bubble wrap in it and he is fuming. And that's because we sped this cat up and slowed the white cat down. So that gets us that achievement. What we're going to do now is get the tranquilizer out and then interact with the orange cat twice. So it kind of acts as a middle ground. So you give it to him once and the cat slows down. But if you give it to him twice, he slows down even more. And then what we're going to do is get the coffee or the espresso out. Interact with the white cat on the right twice. And again, that gives him the middle ground and then speeds him up to hell. And he looks like he's about to pop an eyeball. Which is always what you want in kittens, right? And then we're going to interact with Postbot. Get your vouchers out. Interact with the Postbot once more. Yeah, I've got... Here's that one. Postage B. Error. Post packet pad. Pop, 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 pop. Oh, one. Pigeon. And if there's a simple joy in life, this post bot loves bubble wrap. So what we're going to do, we're going to walk on the bubble wrap three times. So what you need to do is actually go on it until the little animation goes. Uh, walk off it and then walk back on it. You need to do that three times. But again, you need to walk on and then walk off. Uh, so this little animation plays. And the post bot gets <laughs> really interested in it. So that's that. We're, we're happy with this bit. So we're just going to head out of the door. Um, and then we're going to head back in. And then we're going to see our fun and friendly postbot having genuinely the time of his life. And if everyone was happy and simple with this life, then actually, I tell you what, that'll probably be on TikTok. And it would blow up and go viral because TikTok's so amazing. TikTok is crap. Anyway, go to the replacement catch ha cat hatch and whip out the cat right there. Whip him out, stick him in your pocket. Don't worry, you'll probably feed on something else. And then grab the note off the door. And then we can now interact with the clock face as well. Now, put in the code 3649. So that again is 3649. And then we can go upstairs while the post pot goes viral on TikTok for being stupid. Uh, I'm just joking. Sorry, TikTok. I'm sure it's fantastic, really. <clears throat> anyway, interact with the nodding bird right there. So we'll pick up the nodding bird. We'll get him out and we'll come back to the radio in just a little touch while. But for now, we can just head back out. We'll come back to the post office in a tad. And we're heading back out to the main village. So then we're going to head back into the alley. There's going to be this parrot that you probably noticed earlier, but we haven't interacted with yet. But that is what we're going to interact with right now. We are going to need this parrot for... <laughs> He's a funny old parrot. That's my kind of guy. Parrot guy. Anyway, go back into the emergency station for now. We will be grabbing Polly. We are going to be giving him a cracker. And sadly, we're going to be leaving him with the negative Tony. Blech. Anyway, what we're going to do, obviously, we've got our balloons. So get out your giant balloons. 
They do look like condoms, but they are balloons. Interact that with the laughing gas again. And then go out and interact the balloon with the parrot. And that means we can now stick the parrot in our pocket with the cat, which is always going to end well, especially when they're crawling in such small spaces. Your parrot, the... Oh, he's complete. How? It's always the same. You can... He's used... All right, all right, and right, and right, and right. Now we can go into Tony's shop once more. The ever happy and ever delighted to see us, Tony. Uh, what we're going to do is basically we're just going to give her the parrot, and well, she's going to be happier than than we will be. So stick the parrot on the <laughs> what looks like a dildo, and then we're good to go for a minute. After, of course, we need to wake the parrot up. So, of course, um, press the white button on the stun parrot with the espresso. Wake him up. Stick him on the nerdo. And then we can actually leave then. After you put him on the pole. Of course, it's not a... It's, it's, a, it's a dill pole. Yeah, this piece. What? Oh, I just see... Well... Hurry! <laughs> yeah, it's no surprise. And get... Up. Get up! Oh. Ah! I should have listened to my mother. Be careful with this guy. He could... <laughs> just... Maniac! Maniac! Ah! Poor bird. It won't be long before he starts pining for toxic mo- And then Rufus. Let's- I don't- ah! Hi, Rufus. Thanks, Rufus. It's such a- So, Rufus realized that, yes, probably the parrot talking to Tony is not a good idea. We are going to take the parrot back. So, <laughs> Yeah, so thank you for that, Tony. We're not all bad. You know, we got three and a half inches of pure dong here. Isn't that fantastic enough for you? Clearly not. Yeah. Anyway, <laughs> we are heading to the emergency phone. We're going to use the parrot with the emergency phone now. So press the Y button when you got the parrot in your inventory, and that's going to keep Detective Weirdo Gizmo busy for a while. So let's cause a little bit more mischief, shall we? So we're going to head back up to the top right into the town hall. What else do you know? <laughs> so uh, Detective Weirdo's already off his nut. Uh, but what we're going to do there, hello Lottie, how are your eyes? You probably can't see a thing, but we're going back into the mayor's office. Couple of things we're going to put down now. So first thing that we are going to do is use the nodding bird with the communicator. Which is just on the right hand side of the bell. There it is. So press the Y button when you got the nodding bird. Put them on the communicator. And then with the cats. You should now have the cats in your inventory. Don't go out just yet. That was my mistake. Next bird. And this bit does your head, head in actually. Um, but use the kitties with the telly typewriter. Again pressing the right hand. <laughs> I, can't, I can't concentrate with. Next bird. I cannot concentrate, and that's hilarious to me. So anyway, kitties with a the teletype bread. Then we can go back into the post office, and then we're going to go up back into the operator's platform. Uh, the, the operator is off his nut, but that means we can now st we can now grab the <laughs> headphones. Sorry, it's that next, please. It absolutely killed me the first time as well. We're going up to the vault, and we're basically going to use the headphones now and the microphone with the radio. Uh, so what we're going to do there, yeah, as long as you've got your headphones sorted, plug that into the radio. And now, of course, we can use the microphone with it. And now we're going to have a little chat with a little pal. Well, he's a, he's a bit of a douchebag pal, but still, complete douchebag nonetheless. So first things first, choose I found your fiancé. The guy looks like he's got a hell of a beard, by the way. And then what we're going to do is just choose the second option for the next two. I want you to take me with you to El Waisayam. <laughs> and then the third, second, again, second option again. I want a passage to Elysium or nothing at all. And then this cutscene will end. And then we can go back um, to the emergency station. We'll meet. I'll be using you tomorrow night. I thought. What didn't you? Well, I, I, well I'll meet Cletus. Just Cletus. Okay, upper ascension station. Lower ascension station. Ah, Elizabeth. 
So let's go. We're going to the left. We're going back into the alley, of course. Obviously, right in the middle of the top of the map. Going back into the emergency station. And then dun, dun, dun. But... What the... Hey! Look at you, finally! What is that? It's me! I know, and believe the case of... No, I'm talking ever since that girl the pe... Are so distressed. You don't have any proof of theft, I'm in... Then that... Everything I did... Where is she? Has she gained... F no, she's with... What? That tre... That's on... I found me! Who found the... Uh, it was... Excuse My name is Bayless Organ... I forgot to brush my... How can I... I... Be... Is that... What's... Would that... Don't let the girl... Gizmo... Go find his... Thank you, you... Yeah, really. Well done. So we got betrayed there by Dr. Weirdo, but that's fine. So what we can do is get our little kitty cat out. He can finally breathe, have some air. From uh, the stinkiness, that is the pockets. Interact the cat with the tree. And then Dr. Weirdo is going to turn into the fireman. And, well, somehow that, that basically gives us a time to escape. He is genuinely off his nut. That's too many drugs in one lifetime for one man. So we can go slide down the pole, head back into the village centre. And then what we're going to do, obviously, is head all the way down to the bottom left-hand corner into Mr. Little Dwarf Man's house, Wenzel. Wenzel! What? What? what are you know where is Rufus? No, you spy! It's not Will! Ah! Pony? You? What? Or me? Fine, but I don't there isn't. What? I, I don't need keep your gr- I just want to know what who's Oh, so your little cock? What? Hello! Ding 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 ding! Bong bong! Is that Tony sleeping with the dwarf? Does the dwarf manage to pull my ex-girlfriend? I suppose there's not really a lot of men, or <laughs> a lot less women on uh, Deponia. Anyway, head down to the basement, interact with the cupboard, and that is where goal is. Um, Tony's... T well, <laughs> and then the, the cheap Star Wars guys are going to come back in there, and Tony's just still there with her butt-naked body out. So, well, that's interesting. Rufus, no time to get a boner, buddy. We got to go. Get the divining rod out. Use it with the basement door. That basically locks us in. Tidy job. Ah, oh, what a pain in... Mm. Yeah, yeah, you don't... Where are... Hey, back in the day... Oh, sorry, now. And a... Let's... This time, a... One... And well, that basically ends the first act. So, like I said, always worth making a regular save. So I do at the beginning of every act, uh, just in case. And um, so, yeah. By the way, I didn't know that I didn't know Little Wenzel had it in him to sleep with my ex-girlfriend, whose body looked a lot better than I remember. Maybe it's because she wasn't angry at the time. Maybe the angriest someone is, the worse the body looks. That's why I hate my body. <laughs> Anyway, welcome to Act 2. This one is only about 20 minutes long, so this one isn't too bad. Walk across the bridge, fall down until we get back up there. Automatic part, this is mine. Oh. Luckily, I felt... Oh, that's a bad thing. What am I... Damn. So, first things first then, walk to the right, and then at the bottom you can see uh, to the crane. So, just keep walking, and we're going to interact, go onto the crane for now. Oh, yeah. Just on the left, you can see the maintenance box. We're going to open that one up and then take the defective fuse from out of it. And so we've got a defective fuse and a defective goal right now. She's not waking up even with a strong coffee that we made her. Went through all that for her to uh, not wake up. Nice. So choose down. And then what we can do is basically take a little walk all the way around to the left to end up on the other side. As you'll be able to see, we're going to pop our head up. 
There we go, just on the right there. And then what we can do is go up and then head down the path. Basically, our main goal here for the next 20 minutes is to fix this um, junk cart, this mine bike. Whatever the hell it's called, but that is our main goal and objective. Interact with the mine bike and obviously we're going to see that nothing's working, so we need to get that Woiken, into around with the headlight just by the mind bike. And again, with these the, the mega deep pockets that we've got, there we go, we can stick that inside. Go to the right to the viaduct. A couple of things we're doing here. We've got a weird doctor. It basically looks like a scene from Fallout right now. Uh, but we are going to interact with the, not the key, but we're going to interact with the skeleton's leg. Come down from there. Oops. On the right then, you'll see a mirror we can interact with. And then what you can do is walk to the right, but it's going to be a little bit dark, so we're not going through there. Just yet. So when we come out, then head down just a little touch until we can interact with the signaling light base. So we're going to open that one up, grab the red signaling light that's coming out of it, and then we're going to press the... Uh, go into your inventory. Sorry. Inventory, my friends. And then we're going to get the halogen lamp. And what we're going to do is interact that with the signaling light box. That basically, well, that basically makes it work. So the white lamp, halogen lamp, white lamp, all the same thing. Pop that one in, job done. Now we're going to speak to Doc. Um, Doc off, isn't it? Hi there. Oh! So again, a few dialogue options to choose. We're going to choose, is that booze? Which is obviously everyone's first favorite thing especially in wales since everything can open up now um choose who are you all the clubs opened up so now everyone's going is that booze give me the drink and after all this then next thing we are going to choose is i'm a bit of a handyman myself which we all know isn't true but that's fine as well nobody else needs to know we're on a new planet bruh so again, just keep smashing through the dialogue and then choose just as a thought in case a fellow handyman faced a problem. Dot dot dot. Happy days, handyman, blah blah blah. All useless information, but a glorious mustache there, Doc. And then when the mine bike doesn't start, for example. And we're just trying to get information on how to grow such a glorious mustache. And how to get the mine bike working, I suppose, as well. There we go, so we've got an item from Mr. Doc that we specifically needed, obviously, because we always need specific items. And then we can just choose nothing that I couldn't handle myself. And then I have to get moving. I have to be safe and visible. So let us, let us, let us, let us head back to the left. And now what we're going to do, get your inventory out and we're going to use the avial power inverter. We're going to use it with the mine bike. Which obviously in real life that would normally work. But in games it obviously doesn't. It flips over and we've got more stuff to do. So go into your junk heap. Now this is another mini game. Again, this is one that you cannot skip. So obviously do not skip this one. Now I was having problems with this one and I'll tell you why. So get the one, uh, so the first things first then. A couple of things that we need to put on each uh, power inverter. So get the middle of the um, muff, <laughs> the middle muff. Get the middle muff and stick it. You've actually got to place it sort of in the middle of the actual inverter itself. If you try sticking it on the end, as you can see, for whatever reason, it's not working. Um, which took me an absolute age to figure this one out. Um, so you can't actually just stick it on the end. So get the one barreled, you know, the one sort of shape, sort of gear cog right there. And then get the clamp bushing, which is the left-hand side one. Um, but what I do is basically mess around with the gear cog. So I put the... Uh, apologies about this. I put the one with three sort of spikes if you want to call it or spokes on the right one and the and the gear cog with four but the bevel with four spokes in the middle so one on the left four in the middle three on the right now get the clamp bushing which is the left hand side one and just interact that with the middle of the inverter 
And again, I only done it in this weird order because it did confuse the crap out of me. Putting it on the end didn't work. It took me ages to figure out to actually interact whatever it was with the middle of the bloody thing. So get the green muff. Oof, need a little bit of a wash there, honey. And then get the screw-on bushing. And then interact that with the middle <laughs> inverter as well. And then obviously there's only one left, which Rufus automatically does. So again, apologies that was in a bit of a weird order, but because for some reason, again on PlayStation, I think it just works for putting it on the end. And on Xbox, you have to put it in the middle, which took me an age to figure out for whatever reason. So now we've done that anyway, you didn't skip it. So we've got that particular achievement as well for not skipping again. Now we can use the avial, um, the sort of triangle looking one there. Use that on the mine bike. And we are basically done. I think we're done. Purrs like a kitten with asthma. <laughs> uh, that's quite funny. So if you press the left and right bumper, you'll be able to see that you can go and uh, go into different directions. So press set off to go on the right hand side. We're going to fly past this bit and end up the other side. Wonder where I am. Hey, wait a second. This looks exactly like the starting point. Only I'm facing the other direction. Huh. They must have arranged the tracks symmetrically, or... Then go ahead, interact with the switch when we can. There we go, so don't dismount. Uh, interact with the switch just above your head. And then we're going to go up into this new particular room. You this... So from here, there's going to be a cloth on the left-hand side. You can just see under the Welsh Hunter sign there. So grab the cloth before we head out to the tunnel. There's a lever on just in front of us, so let us push that, and then there's a button just to the right of that lever. So again, we will use that button. Then we can just head back down, head all the way to the right, and then we're going to grab the uh, the uh, key from the skeleton, which we took his leg earlier. Sorry, sorry about that, skelly boy. So all the way to the right, skeleton hanging up, grab his key. So again, a few things that we're going to do then. So we are going to uh, go and speak to Doc first. We're going to ask him for his booze. Uh, he's going to give us a swig, to be fair. And we're going to try and keep the bottle. But this is how Doc's moustache gets grown. With pure ethanol. It is just pure asbestos and ethanol rolled into one. That's how you get a moustache like that. So we're going to uh, go into your inventory and get your cloth. Interact the cloth with the booze there, of course, pressing the Y button. And then we've got a cloth soaked in, well, booze, which always comes in handy. So again, we're going to go back into the inventory now. Use the cloth with alcohol and combine that with the dirty mirror. Hi there, do you come... So, just head to the skeleton and what we're going to use is the newly polished mirror. Whip it out, whip it out, take a look at yourself, looking good, Rufy boy, interact that with the skeleton, and then we can just head back uh, to the left, and then we're going through the door, which is sort of on the bottom left, we're, going, we're heading up to the room where our mine bike is, so there is the up button, so make sure to choose that, and then just make sure to head into the next tunnel, right here, so now that we've got the key, or a key, we can use the key with the key box, and grab the wrench. It's no good a wrench being inside a locked box if the, you can't find the key. Well, you know, how good, how good. So next we can actually jump onto the mine bike once more and then go over to, press the left bumper to go to set off. So from here then we can simply dismount off the horse, or the mine bike horse, and we can go back to the right, because now that we've got the wrench, we can now open up the maintenance box that we couldn't get into before. So pass the skeleton with the mirror, looking good buddy, use the wrench of course, and then press the Y button on the maintenance hatch. We can now take the fuse, so we can take the fuse, but what you need to do is actually put one of the power inverters inside. Doesn't matter which one, I put the dorsal one in because I am super cool. And he basically just switches it around. So you uh, get the dorsal power inverter, press the Y button, and that just switches it around lovely. 
Now that what that does is put the lever up, of course, as you can see. And now we can go actually into the right hand side. We got some light. Finally. Blinding enough so that we go blind and that we may trip over and fall and die, but that's all good. So get the bottle there on the right hand side and then also grab the lever on the left before heading back. And then just head all the way to the left again to the tunnel and then pass the mine bike on the left. And now we can use that lever that we just picked up with this hole right here. Again, we can do it lubeless, it goes in dry, no problems at all. So use the shunting lever and then press the A button on it to change the tracks. Yeah, baby, we did it. But we still got quite a bit to do. So we're going to jump back on said mine bike. And then we're going to set off on the left hand side. Lovely jabbly, mate. We're getting here. So we are coming up to a missable achievement, so if you want to make a manual save again, you can here, but basically we are heading back to the crane. Again, it's always worth making a manual save, just in case, uh, you know, quite regularly, just in case you miss something. But we're going on to the crane. Now this is where the missable achievement is. Do not put the fuse in just yet in the maintenance box. What we're going to do is um, go into your inventory. And then use the final power inverter that we got, the binozzle one for me, could be anyone for you, and interact that with the maintenance box. It'll make you go upside down. Rufus is going to poop his knickers off. Um, but it's all good. Because it goes back to normal, plus we get this miserable achievement. Newton would be proud. So just make sure to do that before we put the fuse in with the maintenance box. After we get that achievement, put the fuse with the maintenance box, and then we can be good to go. Interact with the crane lever, and da-da-da-da-da, let's do this, man! Crap! Oh, damn! What's wrong with me? I'm usually totally laid back. It must be the Falcon Dog. Huh. So, that didn't exactly work out like we wanted to, did we? So we're going to head down now, and uh, we're wondering why why are we not good at this game of, you know, what's it called, crany levery game. Power things, teddies, you know, but we're messing with someone's real life. So we need to head basically all the way back to dock now, because we're like, I don't know, maybe we're just in love. And, you know, we keep looking at goal and we're just like, ah, oh, man, all getting all buttery inside. But probably not, we are probably just as useless as Hell, girl. So speak to Darkness. What? Oh. So then, first thing we're going to choose is I have some more interesting challenges. Doc, I am too fidgety, which is exactly like me, to be honest. The hands, the eyes. Boy, you a whole heap of mess. You need to grow a proper beard. Not like that Welsh hunter guy. His is pathetic. <laughs> anyway, so he's going to... Basically, he's given us an empty bottle, so we need to um, get that up, equip the empty bottle, and then interact that empty bottle with the booze. Remember, this is just ethanol and pure asbestos, which combined makes alcohol, I suppose. And then what you need to do is go to the horizon and interact the empty bottle with alcohol with the horizon, pressing the Y button, of course. Now everything's more focused. It's got some letters, and, you know, you're pretty much off your nut right there. <laughs> which... Hey, I mean, if it helps, then we're all good. But, disclaimer, don't drink and drive. Don't be stupid. Okay, thanks. So, with that done, we can now go all the way back towards the crane. And we're basically going to be done with this act. So, it literally took us about 20 minutes or so. Tidy as Spongebob's. So one thing we are not going to be doing is sticking our leg behind our head because that would just open up the holes I never knew existed. So we're going to get the leg of the skeleton, and this is why you come in handy, and we're going to interact the skeleton with the seat. Again, pressing the Y button there, of course. Put the skeleton behind you. Job done. Okay, next thing's next. We're going back into our inventory because what do we need? We need to look at the horizon. So make sure you've got the empty bottle with booze. Interact that with the horizon in the background, and then, voila! 
Forgotten Violin. Now this dialogue option may think you can choose anything, but choose Pup Up. P-U-P-U-P. Just make sure to choose that option. And then Violin. I think <laughs> Right, next thing's next. We're gonna interact with the crane lever, and then this time should be voila. God damn it, I voila three times and it was the wrong bit. My bad. And that is how it's done! All you needed to do was drink ethanol slash asbestos and, you know, say pop up once. And then we're all good. That is basically this for this second act out of three, which is going to interact with the mind bike. And get the hell on out of here, boy. Choose set off as well when we get on the mind bike eventually. <laughs> there we go. We, we do get there eventually, see? Okay, almost done. We've got one more minigame to do, so we're going to choose the switch option next. And then what we need to do then, with these buttons right here... You're quite heavy, babe. Well, she doesn't look that heavy, to be fair, so that's a, that's a bit of a slap in the face to go. So we're going to um, interact with the green lever once, so the green lever is up. The leftmost switch once, so it's in the middle. And then the right switch, we're going to interact with that twice. So the yellow and the red lever, left and right lever should be down. The green right one up. The leftmost switch should be in the middle, sort of pointing in the yellow. And the rightmost switch should be in the red. That is how that should look. And then as soon as you've done it exactly as I've done it there, we can now set off. The master of switches achievement is done. So that is another mini game we've switched without skipping. Cheap Star Wars. Uh, guys are here, but that doesn't matter. We're gonna blast past. No, my um, my sock I'm Hey, I'm still alive. <laughs> I'm not an easy man to break. Oop. And what a slow. Uh, you see, oop. maybe luckily it's. So here we are. We are at deck three. Here, yeah, buddy. Make a manual save if you won't dare. So we get the achievement there as well for doing that. So. We're going to interact first with the anchovy machine on the right hand side. So we're going to grab that down. We've got two missable achievements in this room. One is for eating a lot of things, all five different things. So we get the anchovy machine, get the anchovies and a stick, and we're actually going to press the X button there to use it. So, well, get an anchovy down you from a machine which probably is deliciously disgusting as it sounds. You may, you may as well lick a hairy butt or something, because that would taste a lot nicer, I assume. And what we're going to do then, we're going to interact with these switches. Just three levers, three switches right here. We're going to interact with these around 20 times. Now, you interact with them three times. Uh, basically, the one of them breaks off. I believe it's always the middle one that breaks off anyway. So that one's fine, so don't worry about that. So you just need to now interact with switch one and switch three until the achievement master of levers or something unlocks. So this is the first missable achievement. Then we can just crack on with eating the rest of the crap before moving on. Hmm. I have to think. They're all prime. It's imp It's simple. What if I? I'll get there eventually. They're all prime number. What if I... I'll get there... They're all... I'll get... I have to... 
what keep on switching keep on switching keep on switching and eventually one day ah oh, there it is okay so we're good or oh, lever lever not master of levers it's it's lever lever so we've done that one we can now move on get the other miserable achievement for eating a bunch of crap but there's going to be a shelf on the left hand side we're going to interact with that a button and there's going to be a plug so we need to interact the lever with the plug so press the y button there that's going to electrocute us we're going to be fine because I mean, we're that pretty hardcore, but the con cotton candy machine is going to be working now. So there's three different types of cotton candy that we need to be eating. It's as, again, delicious as you sound. So you interact with it once, and then that is going to get out the neutral cotton candy. So again, we're going to um, use the... Uh, we're going to use it, uh, press the X button there on the cotton candy to eat that boy. And we've still got the stick... So, with the stick this time, make sure that's interacted, and then use it with the lever on the left-hand side of the cotton candy machine. That is going to move it to Calzone Country. Then we need to use the stick with the actual cotton candy machine itself, and that is going to get us a Calzone-flavoured cotton candy. That's very interesting. So again, press the X button when you're in your inventory and get that down your fat neck. Skinny fat neck, apparently, with Rufus. Same thing then, use the stick with the lever on the left hand, oh sorry, you can just, it's interacting with the lever on the le uh, left hand side, sorry. But you've got to use the stick with the cotton candy machine when it's on the right. Uh, because now it's on the slimiest, disgusting one, the phosphor cotton candy. So again, press the X button when you're in your inventory on that. So that should now be an anchovy and three different cotton candies that you've eaten. Phosphor, neutral and calzone. Delicious. Make sure though to get another... Um, phosphor cotton candy. We're going to need that for a little bit later on. Then on the left hand side you can see this chewing gum dispenser. So press the A button on it. And there is going to be a little bit of chewing gum that comes out. But that will be that miserable achievement for eating all five uh, different things. Again press the X button of course on the chewing gum. Get that down your, your goddamn gums. Probably test test that crap. And there we go then, that is the miserable achievement there for getting all those. So apologies, that did actually fly a bit quicker. I thought I was doing that a bit slower than I thought. So that was quite quick, but make sure you've eaten the anchovy, chewing gum, and three different bits of cotton candy machine. So heading into the next room here on the left-hand side. And then what we're going to do, you can see these three, like, mosaics. So if we go into the concourse, which is the dark room on the right... Just on the floor in front of us, there's going to be a little mosaic stone. So we're going to be needing to pick that boy up. And the missable achievement is for basically interacting with all three mosaics, uh, pieces of mosaic there. So get your phosphor cotton candy out and then use it on the lamp. So press the uh, Y button on the lamp. And then what we can do there is use the mosaic. Uh, it basically gives us a glowing bit of phosphor. So we can open up the hatch, putting the phosphor the glowing phosphor cotton candy inside and then you can actually interact with the mosaic table so just make sure to interact with the mosaic table wait for the dialogue to finish that will count as one of the missable three that we need to do so that's job done remember to take the cotton candy back out with you because we need to do it for the other two and we need it for a bit more as well but head to the right you can just see some pebbles on the floor so we're going to be picking them up and then go up towards to elevator now if we head uh, not actually into the elevator, but just underneath the archway and to the right, there is going to be uh, um, uh, uh, a, um, an oil tank and a utility cabinet. So interact with the utility cabinet, and then we need to grab everything we can out of there. So that's going to be the soap, it's going to be the bucket, and it's also going to be the mop as well. So the soapy, buckety mop, make sure to grab all them before heading back down. And then we need to head all the way out to the left. We're basically going to be doing the second mosaic table right here. So we go into the lobby and it's just as you can see there on the left hand side. So it'll be the same thing. Get your glowing phosphorus candy out. Stick it inside the hatch again. Dry as hell. Uh, cotton candy has natural lube. So we're all good. I think. Is that a thing? No, no, probably not. Anyway, do the same thing. Put the candy in. Interact with the mosaic table, remember you've got to do that, and then take the cotton candy back out. Uh, a bunch of little guys, the raggedy cliff, hey, that's, and I'm... 
And there we go. So we've got a cotton candy back. Now we can head all the way to the left again. We're going to Zitauer. And we're heading all the way to the foreground to have a look at the pool. And we've got a bit of barrel with some pool. Now that just looks more like acid. That's not water, but there we go. Uh, so you don't need to interact with the barrel with water, but you do need to get your empty bucket out. Stick that inside the acid death pool. And we've got a bucket full of water. Which is what happen when you stick an empty bucket in water. Now get the pebble out and use that with the pool. So get the pebble, put it with the pool, and then other Rufus will appear. This is genuinely just for a missable achievement. This isn't for the story. Just for a missable achievement. So pebble with pool, job done. He dies, we are good. Happy days. So future us is dead, but that doesn't matter because we're in present. So we don't care about that, do we? So we're going to... Um, Get the soap, and we're going to put that with the bucket of water, which is delicious. So we've got, now we should now have the, uh, put the mop it with the bucket of soapy water. So, show, so we should now have the mop with the bucket with soapy water. And then what we're going to do is go and get the third and final mosaic table. We had to give that a bit of a wash, a bit of a clean. And remember, it is in the concourse on the right-hand side here. So it'll be the same thing. The mosaic is just on the right of the lamp. Use the, mop, uh, use the mop with the dirty mosaic table. Then you can open up the hatch, put the cotton candy in, interact with the mosaic table, and that is missable achievement number whatever it is in the game. Crap, the mop. <laughs> what an unfortunate occurrence. He who likes to... Huh, the kid just like and... Hey, someone has... It must at least ex... Crap. So what we need to do next then, we now need to um, grab the mosaic stone, but we need to combine that with the chewing gum, so we've got a mosaic stone with chewing gum on it. What you're meant to do then is put it on the uh, niche, so into, oh, with a hole, sorry, on the left hand side, not with the niche, obviously. No. Interact it on the left, and what we can actually do now, we can actually just skip these mini games. There's no more achievements tied to mini games, so you can literally just press the start button and then press OK to skip this mini game. So there is no more achievements uh, tied and related to mini games, so we am happy with that, and we end up breaking it anyway, so just remember to pick the mosaic stone up again. So then we can now see a fuse box, so press the A button there to interact with the fuse box. And then what we can take out is a torch light. So take out the torch light, it's in the middle, and then you can actually um, interact with the fuse switch, which basically reboots the, complete, uh, the entire system, so that is handy for us. After we do this, just head to the right-hand side up to the elevator again. So, simply interact with the controls and we are heading on up, Roof Us. What's that supposed to mean? Or have I... So after that little delightful bit, what we can do is we need to grab the flag from here. So we need to interact with the lever first, which is obviously on the bottom. Flagpole comes down, or flag comes down. Grab the flag and then start heading back. Uh, make sure to grab the embellishment, which is just on the right-hand side. Very easily missed this one. So grab the old embellishment, head to the elevator, and then head um, back down towards the main lobby area. It's all... Get in there, slowly. Oh, those are the same people here. So I... And you're sure of abs is there? I want to ask the liver and I even... Ah! 
Sorry, that will kill you. Let's get to work. The fast I I you like. Wait a minute. So Cletus uh, kind of thinks he's Elvis Presley or something there. Um, well, I he's one of those Elvis impersonators which, you know, he kind of looks like nobody likes. He generally thinks he is Elvis when he probably sounds like a dying moose. Anyway, we're going up to the elevator to find him and then we're going to have a little cutscene with a couple of dialogue options to collect. So go to Elvis Cletus. And I can't take the name Cletus seriously anymore, thanks to The Simpsons, by the way. So, a few dialogue options anyway to take. First one is going to be, what's the agreement between you and the Orgamon? And then the second one. About we what you deal where? Well, that's after just a that and uh. Oh yeah. Oh, beside what they after they and they which Ulysses but now that a unit and my Eventually, anyway, is uh all right. Great. There's no one who hates Deponia more than I do. Since there's only eight people on it, and my ex slept with a dwarf. All right. Great. Oh yes. How much? Do Next up, choose, it stinks, it stinks, it stinks. My what? Next up then, choose, let's just say I hate this place, which I think a lot of people can say about their own hometown, even though it's quaint and beautiful. As long as your ex-girlfriend doesn't sleep with anyone who resembles a four-foot man. And the final destination of choice will be, I will go and fetch goal, which will be the very bottom option. So I'll go and fetch goal at the bottom, and then we're good to go. Fine. So that is exactly what we're going to do then, so we're just going to head down. But what we're going to do first, we've got a little bit of combining to do and a little bit of extra combining to do. Obviously, in case you haven't noticed the game we're playing. So first things first then, whip out your mop head. Not the one on top of your head, but your actual mop head. And there is an oil tanker, remember? So we're going to combine the mop head with the oil tank. Get that nice and greasy. And then what we're going to do is uh, get the chewing gum, press the Y button on the chewing gum, and we're going to combine that with the embellishment. And that makes um, a <laughs> slingshot. Almost forgot what it was called. I was going to say hook for some reason. But it makes a... One of them, yeah, slingshots. Again, almost forgot what it was called. Then what we're going to do, interact that, interact the slingshot with the pebble, and then we've got a slingshot with a pebble. Yeah, kind of makes sense now, doesn't it? So head all the way back to the right, down to the concourse, and then what we're going to do is use the slingshot on the lamp. So get the slingshot out once again, interact with the lamp in the middle of the room. That's going to make it go dark and make life shit and easier for us. All hands, battle! Keep calm, Argus! So, let's get a look at a bit like Cletus Elvis Presley here. So, get the embellishment and combine that with the mop handle. Because we need to get the lampshade. So, get your hook out. Oh, Captain Hook! Head towards the left slowly as you can, so obviously we don't get caught. Just enough so that we can use the hook with the lampshade there. So that is what we are doing. Okay, lovely. Next up, like I said, we need to get be looking like Cletus Elvis. So combine the lampshade there with the flag. So we can pop that one on. Now obviously we just need the greasy hair, which of course we've got. So interact the lampshade flag with the greasy mop head. And then that is about as delicious as you are looking. Ish. And then of course what you need to do is press the X button when you're actually on there to put the get up on. And honey, we're good to go. Uh -huh -huh. See, I'm not Elvis, I'm just... I'm crap. <laughs> okay then, so we've uh, fooled the donkey ass for brains right there. So that one's all good. But now we're going to go head back up to the elevator. We're going to speak to Elvis Cletus, the fakest Elvis Presley we've ever, we've ever, ever, we've ever seen. And then we've got to, once again, uh, head up to the top there. We've got a couple of dialogue options again. We're going to need to speak to him about the first one is the Oregon's 
said something about a backup cartridge. You take we did so I then choose I need the backup cartridge. I need the backup. Oh well. It won't and then finally choose goal is unconscious. Goal is unconscious. What did you what don't worry? Yes, yes, is it my things? What do you mean? Without so why don't you guess it? Here's the cup, but as soon and you re So let's go and rescue our goal. So we're going back down to the elevator. Now remember, when we get back down to the concourse, remember we've got to put our Elvis Presley Cletus. Hi, Cletus. Costume back on. My par is my mile. <laughs> so obviously, remember to make sure to do that. Press the X button when you're on the improvised Cletus costume. And then a whole bunch of dialogue is going to happen with crap Star Wars impersonator and flying TV man when we go to the left. Well, well, the car. Of course, here it is. Yeah, and why are you not coming to the... I... But my dear, I beg of you, don't forget, we're all... Let the ambassador, the faster he finds this... Hey, yeah, I do believe that the ambassador... I'm sure that that is... All. Oh boy, that was pretty close. I think I doubt... Rightums, finally! So, now we can go to the right, and we're going back to the candy store, where of course we left Goal just chilling. I mean, that girl is... That is some unconscious type stuff, that. Should really get to a hospital, I suppose. But, oh, lo and behold, she's not there. Er, my god. What happened? But who else could have taken I have A one So, first things first, then. We need to get an anchovy on a stick. Dick, and then a couple of things we need to do. So go ahead, grab that. We're not eating it this time. We will probably die. Use the anchovies on a stick with the um, puddle of phosphor. We can choose the bait with that one. And then what we can actually do is use the torch. Sorry, getting a little bit confused here. There's a puddle of phosphor on the floor. So what we can do is use the torch on the puddle of phosphor to obtain a trace which we can now follow. So this torch has of course come in mega handy. So we've got the part of the phosphor trace again. We're going to use the hand torch that we obtained a little bit earlier on and just follow the trail for now. Very easy to know where the trail is. So then, very interesting, it's going behind the piece of fence, we can move the piece of fence to go behind the tower. Now, what we can do is actually use the anchovy on a stick, which I told you to do a little bit earlier on, it doesn't matter when you do it, you can do it now if you want. So use the anchovy on a stick, and then use it on the uh, phosphor trace, basically that's going to turn into bait, which uh, trust me, we're going to need right now. Interact with a stack of needles. Ouch! Not this. How? Huh, I'll take. <laughs> Who else? Until hilariously, we do find a straw in. <laughs> a straw and a needle stack, which is close enough, right? Interact with the hook, use it on the grating, and then we can just move on into the cable chute. Now there's this big, angry looking whale thing, or he looks sad, or spewy. I don't know. But it's. <laughs> he looks like he's about to rip a new one into us anyway. So we're going to need to use the bait with the torchlight. So use the bait with the torchlight. That is going to get up this glowing bait, which is going, of course, it's going to help us big time. We're going to stick it on this hook right here. Whale's going to be pissed off. That is going to move all the stuff so we can move on by. <laughs> Nip yourself on into the wreck cable boat, but don't expect a cup of tea and some toast here. We've got goal, and we've got Doc with Big Man. 
Well, I don't have this hug. No, stop. They don't work. Well, I, 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 well, I, 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 I just, I, 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 just press the eject. Hey, Jim. <laughs> uh, oh, shit. Well, yeah, that's. Ah, yes. Um, what, 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 you're not, what, what, you, you did. So we get the key, uh, the cartridge there from Gold's Head. Now what we can do, there is a duster that we need to be picking up just on the left there. There we go. Pick that one up. And then go ahead and pick the obvious looking key up from this whatever in the hell that is right there. Tidy as pie, mate. So, kidnap my girlfriend. Well, she doesn't know that. She's been unconscious for most of it. So that's pretty creepy there. Rufus, old lad. Now we can go back to the wreck cable boat. We're going to go to the chest, as you can see, just on the right. Uh, don't go into the cable chute. There is the chest. We're going to use the key on the chest. Grab what we need out of there. Let's get rid. Right then. So once we are done with what we've done here, we need to go back into the boat for a moment. So we've got everything. Basically, it's everything we we need: a steel brush, bottle of degreaser. It is basically for a mini game, but it is for a mini game once again that we can skip. So hooray! So back into the cable boat, we need to get uh, our inventory out, interact the steel brush there with the cartridge, and then the mini game will appear. But again, we can skip that. So blemissimo, mofo. Memory is harsh. Ah oh, well, that's just a tiny speck of dust. We'll have that cleaned up in no time. Ta-da! Good at those scratch. So, did you? Yep. Yeah. Just a minute. It, well, I know it can. It can. Dog. It. Where? Just your Cletus is a bit old. Right then, enough talking. I know you've only just woken up and I've been calling you my girlfriend throughout the entire game, but enough talking. I don't want to know. So, what we need to do, we need to choose, we should take over the Dra- Oregon- Organon Cruiser. It doesn't actually matter which one you pick there. Uh, we can just do whatever, and then we can move on. But we're not. Let's hurry, okay? <laughs> uh oh. That's weird. I, I found. If you feel it, the. <laughs> yeah. Why? No. Hey. Get to them. I keep them. I'll show them. Okay. Sadly, then, we are not uh, free and clear. What we need to do is. Do a little bit of pissing about, really, but it'll help us big time. So we need to interact the straw, and we need to put that with the pool. So get the straw out, get the pool out, and we're going into the hole <laughs> on the left. So let's be badass as hell, shall we? So go inside the trunk there, and we've got a couple of different options to choose. So again, use the right stick, I would pretend, uh, per preferably this time. So choose the left window, and then... Use the um, crank right next to you, which uh, just on the left there, so we can open that one up. Then go through the French door. And then there is a fork that is directly next to us, so let's just pick up that bad boy. Random fork for some reason. Then we are going to head down the pipe. There is a pipe at the very bottom of the screen. So that is where we go in, head to the pipe. 
whip out your fork onto <laughs> our hands. Looking goddamn good. But we need to um, go into your inventory, make sure the fork is equipped, and then use that fork with the horn. Then we can actually use the horn. Eventually. Eventually. There we go. So we've done it eventually. <laughs> Bit of noise. Cheap Star Wars guys there just um, wondering what the hell's going on. Okay, next up then, we can now go through the to the canopy top, which was actually getting us in the way. And there's one more thing to do. There's a platypus soft toy. So you need to actually walk across the bridge first. Give that a little bit of wah wah. And then, of course, you can pick it up. We can pick it up first, walk across the bridge. And then what you need to do, walk across the board just a couple of times. Uh, just keeping their attention, that is all... And then put the platypus soft toy back under it. Walk over it again. And then that should be enough for us to go to the other side. So it's basically just walking across the board with the soft toy there. Go into the crane. This one is quite <laughs> this bit is quite annoying to be fair. And then what we need to do is just interact with the crane lever. That'll get cheap Star Wars guys out the way. Jobs are good in there. Hey, uh, come on. Ah, uh, my fighter codex prevents me from spilling too much blood. I'll Stop! Who goes there? It's me, Cletus, accompanied by my charming fiance, Go. Finally, I was afraid she'd already eloped with that disgusting Deponium. What a bizarre thought. Oh, contraire, Buttercup. Don't be afraid to admit that you did cast a covetous eye on that <laughs> Rufus. Very understandable. To me, he seemed like a dashing daredevil. On the contrary, Honey Bunny. He was nothing more than a self-centered fool. That's enough. You two will have enough time to frolic once we've returned to Elysium. Oh yeah, finally, final, um, fi final, fi final preparations for our return have been made. Very well. Now, I need to talk to you in private, Ambassador. Uh, of, of course. Why don't you scuttle on ahead, darling? Me and the bailiff have urgent matters to discuss. <laughs> Seemingly. But, but... Shoo shoo, sugar. <laughs> if you insist. <laughs> so we'll see each other in a short while then. Toodaloo. Have you lost your mind completely? I thought we had an agreement. The memories of Ms. Goal must be deleted. And we need the Ascension Codes. Don't panic. I'm working on it. I'll swap the cartridges and uh, leave the original on the platform. Th th that should make everyone happy, right? Yes, everyone except for the Deponians. <laughs> <laughs> if you try anything funny, I'll personally decapitate you with a rusty knife. <laughs> so, for whatever annoying reason, you can't actually skip any of that dialogue there. So that's a good two, three minutes that we cannot skip, which is bloody annoying. But we can go up to the elevator now. And we're going to see a bit of argumentative, which is all going to be good for us. And our chances of hitting that goal. Hehehe. <laughs> I all you so dialogue options actually do not matter here, so you can um, just choose you go ahead and sort that out between the two of you. Beautiful. And your dick. At least Rufus is fighting for something he believes in. Oh, you mean he's fighting for the Easter Bunny? So while they're squabbling, we can just go up and interact with Cletus's bag. Now what that's going to do is turn us into Retus or Clufus, whatever, whichever way you prefer to say it. It all sounds pretty stupid either way. But we're going to put on Cletus's rag. So, of course, into your inventory, press the X button on Cletus's clothes. Job done. There we go. So, Rufus's stuff is there for now. So, we can interact with the squabblers again. We are miles ahead of him, actually. We are goddamn out as hell. And then choose Don't Make Me Laugh. Don't Make Me Laugh. And then what's going to happen is little bit. And we can, <laughs> very childishly, but also very hilariously, 
Uh, Rufus, Cletus' butt cheeks are out, so we're going to interact with Cletus' speedos. Whack that straight up. And then stick him on the flagpole. Press the white button there on the flagpole. Chuck him up. <laughs> Job's good. Ha! Ha! We did- We- To- Not so- What was the agreement? What? Forget- That's all toxic- Let's go. To a list. Wait a minute. You don't even care. You just want to whatever the Me? What a change of attitude. Deponia sting. If it were up to me. Yeah. You keep out of don't believe a word. He just wants to But how do I know I trust this? Don't go. He's just I'm just He will go. Cool. How the you know but how but you can't I'm sorry. Congratulate you just in So after grabbing the cartridge out of goal, this is a very important missable achievement. Make a manual save if you want to here, but just make sure to choose the middle dialogue option every single time. Um, there are quicker ways you can do this, but to get the missable achievement there, we have to say, uh, say goal. Basically, everything with the dot, dot, dot at the end. So, every time it is the middle option. Okay? So, don't choose anything else. Always the middle option with the dot, dot, dots at the end. So, say goal. Say goal. And then choose, it's like this. It's like this. Then choose, well, I want to slap it, I want to slap it well, in Sajin P. What are you stammering about? Spit it. And then choose, it's just that. I love you, robotic lady. You're beginning to scare me. What's wrong with you? And then again, choose the second dialogue option. All right, then, I'm going to tell you now. And that is how you get the missable achievement. If you choose anything else, that particular uh Root won't come up, and then you won't get the achievement there, loving the truth. Job done. So, this part is important. What we're going to do here is make another manual save. This is my memory. I mean, but... Okay. I'm, I'm, Unfortunately, the goal on the other cartridge... You can probably make, we're only about five minutes towards the end now, but basically we need to make a manual save because we need to finish the game, remember at the very beginning, in droggle drug mode. But what we can do is make a manual save at the end, play through this final bit, and then go through droggle drug mode again. Um, you probably can make a manual save, but for the next couple of minutes it's basically all just cutscene. So that is why I just made a manual save there, you can make a manual save here if you want. Um, I wasn't sure if you could make a manual save in the middle of a cutscene, that's why I got a bit paranoid and done one there. But just make sure you do your manual save so we can get the droggle drug mode out a lot quicker. Otherwise, bit of cutscene, bit of dialogue, a uh, bit unskippable at the moment, I'm afraid. It's now. So this is... I, mean, I suppose you could do the manual save here if you wanted as well, but still, it doesn't matter. So we're going to return the cartridge, grab the cartridge off there, and then with the reading machine, we're just going to leave. Sorry, sorry. We're just going to grab the cartridge, and we're just going to head all the way back up to the elevator. Oh, look at that. Cletus has <laughs> freed himself. He's probably sounded a bit squeakier, and his genitals are probably up inside himself now after being hung on a flagpole. But still, it's all good. What is going on here? Oh, I got but one now. You give. Come on, Ruth. I will. You can't change that. But if you. So then, now choose. You've won. Here's the cartridge. Okay. You win. <laughs> and I bet the gold. I'm smite. <laughs> Um, a lot. Uh, uh, can't you remember anything? Have I always re we have uh, that you that. Uh, yeah, can't we? Yeah. So we are very much now almost done. So press B and then start to skip the cutscene. 
job done. Now what you need to do is press the right bumper twice to go over to the TV man. Yes, the TV man. And then grab his right hand side handle. And then that will be the game complete. But we've got one more achievement for the whole Droggle Jug mode crap. Um, so... With this, again, these dialogue options here do not matter at all, so you can literally pick whatever in the hell you want. <laughs> literally, literally anything you want. And the game will end, and then we can go into Droggle Drug Mode, which again, because where you made the manual save, it shouldn't take too long at all. Five minutes, even less if you decided to do it uh, a lesser time than me. But that should be the end of the game now, so we can just go ahead, press B, and then start to skip again. So... Now, a couple of people were saying that they could just press continue, then go on to settings, and then go for it from there. But for me, personally, the continue button did not work. Again, could be different on PlayStation, but on Xbox, at least, the continue button didn't work. So we're going to go back onto settings. We're going to choose. Remember, you've got to choose both options and get them with the US and UK flag with the weird-looking donkey-ass character right here. So make sure you've got it exactly as I have here. The two characters on the UK US flags. You've got to do them on both of them. Make sure to press A OK to save and leave. And then we can then load up. You've actually got to go into load slash save. And then just go ahead and load up your last save. So obviously you've just got to play through that game again. So for me it was just going downstairs, grabbing the cartridge. Um... <laughs> Everything's in Droggle Drug Mode. Now, the worst thing about Droggle Drug Mode is, not only is it freaking annoying, with every character saying Droggle Drug Mode the exact same all the time, you cannot actually skip any of the cutscenes or anything. So you've got to listen to Droggle Drug for about a billion times before you actually want to shoot yourself. So if anyone has got Droggle Drug Mode, done it from start to finish, I will buy you a beer. And if you don't drink a beer, I will buy you a brew and a slice of cake, because god damn, that's impressive. Struggle, Jack. Struggle, Jack. Struggle jug, 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 struggle struggle jug, struggle jug, struggle jug, struggle jug, struggle jug, Droggle 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 jug, <laughs> droggle jug, 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 droggle jug. Told you it's bloody annoying, didn't I? <laughs> but obviously we've only got the one thing left to do. So again, press the right bumper. Remember, choose the right hand side handle and then just enjoy the Droggle Jug cutscene. What the hell is Droggle Jug and why is it in my life? I don't like it. Droggle Jug. Droggle Jug. Droggle Jug.
Droggle jug. Droggle jug. Dro 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 Droggle jug, 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 droggle jug. Droggle Juck, Droggle Juck, Droggle Juck, Droggle Droggle Juck, Droggle Juck, Droggle Juck Droggle Juck, Droggle Juck, Droggle Droggle Juck Droggle Juck, Droggle Juck, Droggle Juck Droggle Juck, Droggle Juck, Droggle Juck, Droggle Juck, Droggle Juck Droggle Juck, Droggle Juck, Droggle Juck, Droggle Juck Droggle Droggle Juck, Droggle Juck, Droggle Juck, Droggle Juck And there we go then, thank you God for that. So then, guys and gals, that was Deponia. So now you should get the final achievement, Droggle Jug. Again, like I said, this is the first out of four games, so expect another three after this one. Uh, and again, you know, thank you so, so much for watching, guys and gals. If you did enjoy the game, if the guide helped you out as well, don't forget, of course, to like, comment, subscribe, and share with a friend. Don't forget, of course, to check me out on all my socials as well. Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, also Patreon as well. And speaking of which, thank you so, so much to everyone who continues to support the channel and show, interacting with anything I do, but especially to those on Patreon. You guys are all fantastic legends. Thank you so, so much once again. I shall see you in the next one. Ba 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 big love.